Well, good morning. It's Gordon again, Gordon Hickson, Rachel's husband. And I don't know whether you were with me yesterday when I talked about praying for Muslim people, but today the whole of uh, the Islamic world, worldwide, globally, is entering Ramadan. 30 days of praying and fasting, seeking God for revelation. Uh, as I said yesterday, you know, to them, God is a million miles away. They don't have any real expectation of hearing from him, but there is a desperation and a longing to connect with him. So today I'm going to be talking through some of, uh, just a few of the movements. I mean, there are many different movements and I'll go, th I've been through some yet last week. I'll go through some more this week, but just want to unpack some of the movements that are going on within Islam. So Father, will you help us today? Will you just anoint us with your love for these people as we enter praying along with millions of Muslims and uh, with so many millions of Christians praying with them. I pray, Father, that this will be a very particular time of revelation, <clears throat> that one by one they would begin to st start entering into a real understanding of Isa Amasi, Jesus the Messiah, and come to a relationship with him. Amen. So let me just share a little bit about uh, a movement called Quranism. Now obviously you understand that the Quran is a bit like our Bible, but it's a book of all of Muhammad's revelation. That is, to, to Muslims, the, the unique book. It's a book which they feel is really holds the very word of God. But then they have the Sunnah. Now the Sunnah are all of the other recorded words of Muhammad and some of the things that he did. They're all put into that, that uh, group of books called the Sunnah. And finally you have a thing called the Hadith. Now the Hadith are other people's stories from other people. They, they, they met or they heard of Muhammad and so they, it's like apocryphal stories about him which are all gathered together in the Hadith. So you've got the Quran, the Sunnah and the Hadith. <clears throat> Those are the three. Now there are a group of people that just will not accept the Sunnah and the Hadith and so it's called Quranism. And these people really had, are very interesting because they even, they, they only accept the Quran, but they will not accept this reverence of Muhammad. They talk about how Muhammad just didn't have reverence for himself. He just reverenced God. And so because they are just into the Quran, they just are passionate to pursue God, to revere God. And they feel that many Muslims globally are very idolatrous in their reverence for Muhammad. Now, isn't that interesting? So let's pray. These people are God seekers. Now, what I want you to understand, and I've been amongst Muslims all my life, I want you to understand that we're dealing with millions of God seekers. I mean, that is the whole nature of Ramadan. <clears throat> They're looking and reaching out for God. So we need to really pray, as we're praying with them day after day, pray that that Remember, seek and you will find. Let's pray for that, that real intervention of God in their world, that he will step in. Remember, uh, I think Rachel has spoken about it sometimes in many countries. They say, have you seen the man in white? You know, those visions and dreams they have of this man in white coming in, Jesus, Isa Amasi, saying, I am the way, the truth, the life. So that's the first movement. <clears throat> the second movement and apologise for my throat, <coughs> but um, the Muslim Brotherhood is a movement. Now this is an, a, a completely different movement. This is a movement which is one of the most, the oldest and the most influential of the modern Islamic movements. It began in Egypt in uh, 1928 and its focus was a personal and uh, social improvement and also it was involved a lot in charity. But it was really a, a political movement as well. And it's a, it was a political movement that spread into many of the Islamic states. Now eventually it was outlawed, it was outlawed in the 1950s, but then it moved to Europe. And uh, uh, there's been a lot of work uh, around Europe and, and Britain with the, the Muslim Brotherhood. What is interesting for us here in Oxford is that the grandson of the founder, Tariq Ramadan, is an, an Oxford scholar and he, he works, he has worked out of scholar. In fact, his post here in Oxford has been suspended. But <clears throat> I have prayed for Tariq Ramadan for years. 
and he, I know he's going through a lot of tough stuff. He's had a lot of accusations, moral accusations, and threatened with uh, imprisonment. But I've really prayed for him because I've prayed that he would be like a Paul. And I want you to pray with me that this man who has uh, who's come down such a line of, of this, um, this Islamic Muslim brotherhood, that something will happen in his heart in this difficult time. So Father, we really pray today that the power and the love of God would pursue Tariq Ramlin, just like Saul was pursued by the Spirit of God, who became Apostle Paul. We pray that this man would be touched and he would become apostolic in the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, at the other end of the spectrum, you get progressive Muslims. Now, these are very, very common today. And really, they're, they're common because so many Muslims have come into the Western world and they've, they've had their Islamic traditions and cultures watered down. And more and more, these progressive Muslims challenge the uh, the rather closed culture is Islam. They want Islam to be relevant in the 21st century. I mean, you can understand that. And they tend to be led by those whose values react to all the, the, the strict Islamic values. For instance, they, uh, I don't know whether you know that some of the things that the Quran says about women, um, I won't go through them here, but they are, in our culture, they are quite, uh, they're quite shocking the way they think about women and treat women. And so in the 21st century, many of these progressive Muslims just say, that's just not gonna, it's not gonna hack it with me. I refuse to treat my wife and other women like this. And so they are rejecting some of those Islamic things. And also, uh, just as we have it in the, in the Christian faith, we have gay people challenging Islam, and we have other human rights groups that are challenging it. So you get this big group of progressive Muslims who often meet online, they meet privately, because they're, they're challenging something, and they feel very misunderstood and rejected. So let's pray that for this encounter with God. I believe for this group of people, it's only an encounter with the love of God that is going to touch their hearts. It's not going to be arguments, it's not going to be polemics or, or apologetics. <clears throat> they need to know the love of God. So Father, we do cry. We cry out for this huge group of progressive Muslims all around the Western world. We pray, Father, that they would be touched by the love of God, even in their encounter with Christian people. I pray, Lord, that they would just see the love in people's eyes. They would see the love and friendship as people reach out with, a, with Christian love to touch their world and to help them. And so, Father, let this time of Ramadan be a time of softening in their hearts. In Jesus' name. We then got a whole group, another movement, of international student movements. Now, I'm talking about this country, but we get every year about 15,000 Muslims that come into our universities, obviously not during the, uh, the time of COVID, but normally we get about 15,000 Muslims coming into our universities to study. We have many coming into Oxford. But they are this group of people are highly likely to meet born-again and spirit-filled Christians who are going to reach out in the love of God to them. Now, most of these people are either from the Middle East, they're from North Africa, they're from Indonesia, Malaysia, Central Asia, and many of them are very intelligent people, and they are searching, they're seekers. And as they are befriended, uh, you know, we have the most wonderful opportunity in our universities to welcome them and to help shape their view of Christians. Many of them grow up having a very distorted idea of Christians. They, they don't understand who we are, really. Many of them think that, that Christians are very liberal people, that they are, uh, they are drunkards, they're womanizers, they've got uh, no moral values. In, in other words, they, they think that the Western world is Christian, but they don't realize that Christians are totally separate and different from, their, from the Western moral values. So let's pray for this group of people because many of them form relationships with Christians. And they, I mean, they're close relationships with true believers. And I know many of them who've come to an encounter with Jesus. So particularly during this COVID season, let's pray 
for this next wave of students who are coming in. And finally, we have a group which we call the cultural Muslims, a little bit like the progressive Muslims. But we've got millions of people who are just culturally Muslims. And they, just like we go, we have cultural Christians who go to, to church Christmas and Easter. They have their cultural Muslims who will go to their different feasts. But they're really atheistic. They've got no knowledge of God. And, or, or they're either agnostic as well. They just don't know. They very, very seldom go to the mosque. And this type of cultural Muslim really uh, typifies the what I call the stans, the, all of the, the Central Asian groups of, uh, of nations. For instance, in Azerbaijan, um, it doesn't end with stan, I know, but Azerbaijan, same sort of area. But do you know only 1% of Muslims go to the mosque? In Azerbaijan. You see these cultural Muslims seldom will go to the mosque because they they have no they have no understanding of it they have they have no need for it and they have no understanding uh, of God. Then if you look at um, Albania I think they say that five percent of Albania go to a mosque five percent of the Muslims in Albania go to a mosque. Strangely Closer into Europe, in uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina, 14% of Muslims will go to a mosque. So they will perform their prayers as well. So we need to pray that something will make these people hungry for God who understands them and loves them. So those are just a few movements to pray for. And as we go on into Ramadan, please do uh, go online and get the 30 days of prayer for the Muslim world. It's going to be very, very helpful to you because most of my material that I'm talking about comes from the 30 days of prayer for the Muslim world. And we are praying every day for different topics day by day. But I'm just giving you a flavour of them so that, that you can really understand them. So today, just think about those Quranists who are God seekers, will only touch the only really want the Quran. Think about the Muslim Brotherhood. Think particularly about the leader, Tariq Ramadan. And some of the others who are who are desperate to make uh, their mark on society. Think about the progressive Muslims who are really challenging culture. And think about those international Christ student movements who are flooding out into different Christian nations and being touched. And finally, those cultural Muslims who are living in a, a Muslim culture but don't really have a, a real contact with Islam. So Father, today... As we start Ramadan, we want to connect with millions of precious Muslim people. We pray also for the millions of Christians. We pray that the love of God would so flood the hearts of millions of Christian people that during Ramadan they would lift up to heaven their Muslim neighbours, Muslim friends and different nations and different, different movements. And I pray that this Ramadan would be a most extraordinary Ramadan where the Spirit of God would invade many homes with dreams, with visions, with the love of God and that they would bit by bit have the blindness stripped away from their eyes and they would see the love of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We pray for them Father, we love them, we thank you for that Mahabba love the, the love, the mahabba in Arabic meaning love. We pray for that mahabba love, that incredible love that will stretch out and touch these people and suddenly make life worth living. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. I'll be talking again on Wednesday and then my final session will be on Friday. But do join with us day by day uh, over these 30 days praying for Muslim people. God bless you.